do a lot more uh, introspection in terms of what can we do that we can control, shot charts, uh, where, where you're getting in your offense, what defensively, there's some things we got to do better, particularly transition defense. But I think the talent uh, this year gets a little bit of an incomplete from the standpoint didn't get a lot of opportunities to play together, so that messes up your cohesion. Talking to KP, he likes to use the word rhythm. We can never get a rhythm together. I'm not going to dispute any of that, but at the end of the day, we, we got to do better, and that's our intention. So, with that, I'll take questions. Thank you for being here. Sorry, we couldn't find a smaller room. <laughs> Tom, good morning. Um, you said it's a disappointing year. Mm -hmm. What do you think are some of the main reasons why you have come here? Well. Again, it's already been visited quite a few times of the consistency of the availability, I think, affects a lot of things. And people may not always put this together, but for players to get the opportunity to play together and become cohesive unit, I think, is important. And it's, you know, you, you, your mind plays tricks on you. You say, well, KP was here last year, Kuz was here last year, Brad was here last year, but they never played together last year. So really, it was all kind of starting from the jump. Brad and, uh, Brad and Kyle had some experience playing together, but when you bring KP at the deadline, Brad was out basically the rest of the year. And Kyle went down late in the season. None of that matters. Excuses are what they are, but I think that was a big part of it. I think we had some um, some moves that we made in the offseason. Looking back, a couple of guys, you know, made a trade. One of the players, it didn't work out what we thought was going to happen. It's nothing against him. At times that just happens. That's why you make a lot of transactions. You always try to add to your team. Some things work out, some things don't. And I, I just honestly think this team, um, that when we were going into deadline, or we are going into all-star break, right? We just went eight and four, had a hell of a win in Minnesota. And we were down and it was clicking. Everybody did what they needed to do to get back in the game, won that game, and feel really great. And uh, came back out of break, had a really difficult loss to New York. Kicked the game with Toronto, two losses to Atlanta, a tough one with Milwaukee. Like those, we just we got to get amnesia. I tell our players that all the time. Let this, let that loss go. We got another game. And I think those those tough losses kind of affected us. Uh, we got to get mentally tougher, for sure. I think that's something that it starts from the top down. We we have to really push guys to to get through. When a, when a loss is there, leave it there. When a win is a great win. Enjoy it for that night. Get ready for the next game. We got to keep moving. I think that's something we got to work on for sure. We got to get tougher. Um, you know, I think we saw some great progress. Unfortunately, some of the young players got to play more this year than we projected because there was availability of minutes, right? And we saw that with Jordan Goodwin. That was a great thing that happened because of an unfortunate incident, right? Where you got somebody that's injured, he gets to step up. Corey Kispert, you know, I think if we had to do something with Corey today, he would qualify as a starter. That wasn't <laughs> that wasn't the plan, you know. Two years in, and he's at the most threes in franchise history for a two-year player. He's done a lot of things that, hey, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm glad to see his development. But that also says he was playing a lot more minutes than we had planned because guys in front of him weren't getting the minutes. So well, I think those are some of the things right there. Um, and less than 24 hours later, you know, we're still kind of – we have a bigger way of going about evaluating the season. And when that's done, I think we'll feel a lot better the direction we're going. We know that the draft is coming. Um, if there's any consolation to going through what we went through, then we should have a really good pick. We have free agency. Um, we have a lot of things that we can do to get better. So those come in time right now. We really need to be where we're at with our players, with our staff. Let's all download, see what we can do better. Is the goal still to re-sign Kuz and KP? Oh, yeah, how, certainly. How does, how does the availability that you alluded to mm -hmm. I think you got to look at it. Certainly, that's a concern. Availability is a big piece in this business, and so is a lack of talent. And I think when those guys are on the floor, we're a lot more talented. And uh, that, it kind of starts with that. And who knows where it goes in the summer? That's our our uh, process will tell us by the time that July rolls around, we'll know exactly what, what's going to happen. I think we had great response from both players and have options to opt out that they want to be here. And I think everybody, this is the time to say, okay, what is it going to take for us to be better? What are you going to do? And what are you willing to sacrifice to get better? And that's for everybody. And certainly with those guys, 
they have options to go other places. I mean, they choose to be here. They want to be here because they're going to, they know they can win. And I think that's really important. So, um, and it's not just those guys. You know, I look, probably the most devastating injury, quite honestly, to us this year was, was DeLon. You know, missed 29 consecutive games. There's a death by paper cuts where, where guys miss a couple games here, a couple games there, but he missed a big chunk of the season, and that's really the, the meat of the season where he was missing. And that was difficult because you saw his impact when he came back. Quite honestly, he's an all-defensive candidate when he's fully healthy all year long. And you notice his impact when he's playing, and you sure notice it when he's not. You know, when we really wanted to address defense this summer, that was a big get for us. And he came in and, and you know, those first first few games you saw it, and then when he returned you saw it. We need that clearer picture. We, we can't afford to lose someone like him for 29 straight games. That was tough. Someone else step up. That's great. We had some other guys get those minutes, but the idea was to have a healthy DeLon. In your 35 games, that Beal, Kuzma, and Porzingis mm -hmm. played together, what did you like? about their rhythm that they had when they did play? I think they really play well off of each other. You know, there's plenty of space out there. Uh, KP can shoot just about from anywhere out on the floor and have a mismatch. And that really helps, you know, when you have gravity people out there, that opens it up a little bit more for Bradley. For Kyle, you know, I, I think um, Kyle was a heck of a player when we acquired him. But I've seen him climb several levels since he's been here, and that's been fun to see. And I think he's still got more to give, more to do. Um, but we, in Chris Epps, um area, I, I think he and Brad really work, work well together in just a two-man game. They, they really read each other well, and Kyle's such a smart player. He can fit in wherever. So those are really encouraging things, for sure. I think we got to get a little bit more shot creation out on the floor with them, probably a little bit more rebounding with them. I think we inserted Daniel into the lineup next to, to KP, and that those two really do well together. But they're still... You know, there's another layer we got to go up to to get where we want to be. And it's not just that starting five. It's it's that top eight, top nine. And uh, that's something we address. Doesn't happen overnight. I mean, God, well, I, <laughs> Lord knows I've, I've lost a lot of sleep trying to figure out how you can expedite this process. But sometimes you got to just stay patient. You know, it's a, it's a maddening pursuit. But I think we're on to something with these talented guys. And I can't say enough about their character. You know, we, we look around and I, I love our problems. And I think we continue to build. You know, talent gets to the NBA character keeps you here, and I'm really proud of this team. You know, I was walking around the arena last night, and the workers on the fourth level, the two of our players, had, had gave them, treated them to something really neat, just to say thank you to people that work very hard that really don't ever get notes. And I had to find out from the workers that those guys aren't talented people. You know, I'm really proud of that kind of character that. Character is what you're doing when nobody else is looking. And I think we have good people. And But that, that win-loss column, column still doesn't care about that. we got to continue to build and win, put a winning product out on the floor. But I'm proud of these players. I'm very grateful for our staff, our coaches, our medical media, everybody that has a hand in this business, uh, countless hours. You know, they're, they're undefeated. They're great people. And I think we're on to something with that. I know you know the, the history here in the city with regard to this team and, and how long it's been. And, uh, and you can't manage a team based on what happened before you got here. I understand that. But what is the sense of urgency to get this thing turned around as quickly as possible? Yeah, knowing, it's huge. Knowing that, you know, it's been a long time since yeah. this team has been a consistent, you know, championship level threatening team. Oh, there's no question. And these players weren't here for all that history. And you got to really start where you're at. I, I acknowledge it's frustrating. The fan base is frustrated. We're frustrated. So there's a huge sense of urgency. But that, that sense of urgency didn't guide me to make a crazy trade at deadline this year. We could have done some things if I win three or four more games, but add 30, 40 million dollars to our payroll, knowing that what's coming up this summer. I thought it was time uh, to see what Danny could do with more responsibility. That was the trade we made at deadline. I make sure everybody was happy with their role. And if they're not, then I you know, wish them well and they can go find their role somewhere else. But the most important thing is sometimes the moves that you don't do to preserve your opportunity to grow in the outgoing seasons. You know, I, I, I very uh, reflective.
especially this time of year. Like, what 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 could we have done better? Where would we have? But, you know, I think I said it before. We're, we're not trying to just go get the eighth spot and pat each other on the back and say, "Well, we made it to the play." And like, that would have been a great accomplishment for this team. When you look at who missed the season and whatnot, but that really, in the big picture, to your point, to get us where we want to go, it's going to take much bigger than that. So let's keep pushing. You know, I, I think there's an opportunity, like you said, to add talent through the draft. There's an opportunity to, to retain free agents that we, we've always done. That's why we can't always – we haven't been a cap team in over 20 years. It's hard. We were able to do things in free agency that we've added pieces over the years. I, I dispute anybody say that guys don't want to come to D.C. I think that's – we lock up our players uh, that we you know, truly value and have put in the time. I think that's important. It, it speaks to the NBA. And so now you rely on your best players to play their best and keep adding talent. The sense of urgency to answer your question is huge. You know, we can't wait anymore. It's time. And, and we got to keep pushing all the different areas that we can and, and look at every opportunity to, to get better. Uh, with, uh, with also knowing that no one player or players is responsible for a record, the three players that you're building around mm -hmm. spent 35 games in the record with 16 and 19. Yep. It's not all their fault, but on the other hand, they did this. Able to no, it, it doesn't. Well. It doesn't inspire, right? Like, okay, these guys are gonna, based on that sixteen and nineteen. But you gotta project it out too and see the games that were involved. And I don't think thirty-five games is enough to make a decision on anybody. I think you would agree with that. You Hall of Fame credentials. That nobody ever says thirty-five games. Hey, man, we tried it. Let's go on. You know, rebuilding's hard, and retooling is hard, and getting lucky is hard. What you gotta do is continue to add talent, get better every time. And, Say it till make your ears bleed, but it takes talent to get talent. So let's keep pushing that direction. Make sure we're developing them to the very best. And I, I think we saw some success stories. And then we saw when you take a lot of swings, some work, some don't. And let's keep going. But the 16 and 19, we, we own that. And that's that's definitely true. But that's a really small snapshot compared to what it could be. It's up to us to really unlock those that trio and, and hopefully to continue to see the good things. And you know, I, I look at the. There's so many wins, and one of the maddening things is I honestly felt we were a little bit better on the road than we were at home. We got a first – we have to have home court event. DCS, fantastic fan. We, we need to have this place rocking, and that's on us. We, we got to put a product out on the court for people to do that. But I think they saw some great good wins at home, uh, but certainly on the road. We go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most of the teams in this league. And even just recently when we were down people, being able to go you – know, but the consistency, the key to the NBA, right? It's those 401k month is that October, November. You got to put your wins in. You can't say, okay, if we just go undefeated in April, we'll be fine. Like, when does that happen? You got to put in the work all year. And you look back, and we had an 0 and 10 stretch. And guys, you know, everybody battled. We didn't point fingers, but we were 0 and 10. That's hard to overcome. And you get the injuries. You add all the different things that happened in the season. And I double checked, and no one cares. That's on us. We we got to keep pushing. But you know, you really have to approach the season in a way that says, "Hey, if you're playing the right way, and you're doing the right things that are within your control." The record takes care of itself. I think sometimes we really look like a really good defensive team. And if you took ten game samples, again to your point, is that enough? No. There were times we were top five, top ten defense top five, top ten offensive team, and then the next ten games come and you go down. So why is that? What happened? Why can't we be consistent? That's the questions we got to answer. When you mentioned the defense, and but I know that was a priority when you guys brought in last. Yeah. And, and is there anything in particular that you want to add that? Hmm. That, that's something that I think if you've asked 12 people, you might get 12 different answers. Overall, I think it still comes down to it's a controllable thing on the effort end. It's a controllable thing, particularly in transition defense. It's communication. And one thing that's disappeared, and, and you'll see in the playoffs, like the teams that really have veteran players that have played a lot of games together, they're going to have an immediate impact on the playoffs because it, it's easier for them. It's a big thing. Communication, right? being able to treat game 82, game one, it has the same approach every time. You can't reinvent yourself during the season and say, okay, today we're going to start talking. Today we're going to help out. It has to be from day one. And I think that's something that we all have to demand 
more accountability. Um, and that consistency is hard. I mean, giving Wes, you know, a whole lot of credit for night in, night out, didn't know what he was going to have out there. But I think the overall tenant of this team, the pillars of our team, have to be 1 through 12. Because the next person up, they got to know my job is the exact same as the guy ahead of me in terms of the effort and knowing what we're doing offensively, defensively. Those are very important. I think that's something we can all do better, for sure. Probably two quick ones for you. One, you said we're at three poker guys who hold you that. Bill through the G Leagues, NBL, yeah. OVP. The infrastructure you have right now with that Togo team, uh, how does that make you feel? Well, it's tremendous. That was our vision when we got to Gogo. And I'm, I'm really hands on with the Gogo. We select the players, we put them there. There is a reason that they're there, and we have a, a really good path that we create for players that come in and, and succeed. And it gives me great gratitude. You know, we have a fantastic infrastructure, and what Amber Nichols, Mike Williams are able to do when we it's a it's a tough job. They're getting players that are dropped in their lap. You know, this is what we need them to do, and they they do a great job. They really do. But I think it's important to see the success that Jordan Goodwin had. Understand this league, uh, you cover it, but there's players that really. They watch everything, and we're in a recruiting business at all times. And I think people see, hey, you got an opportunity, come come to D.C. and you, you can succeed. You know, I was most proud, one of the most proud things ever. It, it reminded me, my big recruiting pitch for Chris Dunn. I said, Chris, years ago, I, you know, there was a player that was out of the league and was really, really hurting and just needed a chance, and it was Sean Livingston. And it was, Sean was done. He came back here and got his career back on track. And I said, Chris, it would give me nothing but pleasure. If we can get you back in the NBA, that's the goal. If it could be here, that, that'd be great. You know, but that opportunity didn't exist because he couldn't be a two-way guy. We didn't have a roster spot. But that goal, what Chris is doing with his dad gives me as much pride as what Jordan did with us. Like, it's just neat to, to, to be fulfilled. You know, when we say these things can happen and they do, I think that was huge. I see the prop, uh, the potential and you see what Quentin Jackson's doing now. Jay Huff, we brought Jay. Jay was back. We had him originally a year ago. I mean, we like to have those kinds of players around. You know, the new CBA, when they get around to getting it to us, all the information, but it is, does contain a three, uh, a third two-way, and that's going to be something we're going to really dive into. Those players continue to thrive here, and I think that's a, it's really institutionally. I, I'm proud of what our organization does with that. One more for you. You've been in this business, you know, like you say, we love you, we hate you. you, you, you <laughs> I didn't you. say that. But I'm just, saying, I'm just saying, you know, like, what I'm asking, when, when you can play it, like, you try to show maybe fans turning on you, you guys say you want to go to culture, lean on your brothers or your staff. Sure. How do you kind of round out the, the negative and, and lean on the positive? Every day, you have a chance to get better, and that's our job. I expect, you know, fans vote with their feet. Fans are going to tell you how they feel, and I feel the same way when you don't see something success. But overnight success takes sometimes five to ten years. We're not looking for that, but it's you have to take it for what it is. It's an opinion of how the team is doing. We got to do better. But I promise nobody wants it more than we do. Like I, it, it hurts. It hurts to be sitting here today, not in the playoffs. It, it does. It's devastating. We thought we were better, and we can dwell on that, or we can say how we're going to get better. And that's all I'm focused on. And that's what drives us, you know, it gets you into this, seeing Daniel Gafford and his progress this season as a player is very gratifying, but seeing him get that award yesterday as being such a huge person in the community, that's something we can also point to that we really do mean it when we say we want to be a pillar in the community. So those kinds of opportunities, I think, matter when you have tough seasons especially, but when you want examples without your, throughout your organization, you know, it's deeds over words. We can tell you what we're going to do with the show. We have good people. Hello. You know, I think he, he's going to be the first one to say how disappointed, you know, he is that, that the season that he ended up having because the, the numbers show he had a very efficient season. I think it gets uncomfortable. Um, it's hard when you're in every single story, no matter what, because you're the cornerstone of the franchise. I try to take that stress off of them. You, you are certainly our, our highest paid player, but really you're, you're 
somebody that helps drive this team, but you're not the only person. You have help. You have people, and, and we got to build around it. I I share his frustration. I think it's hard for a player when you're not able to play and you see the team losing. It's hard to be out there on the floor. Things aren't going your way. You saw Brad win some big games for us and take over games. And you saw him try to take over games, and it didn't happen. And everything that comes with that struggle, you know, but I'm very impressed by his ability every day to put in the hard work, be an example to our young players. And, and understand leadership comes in so many different forms. Some people are very vocal. Some people lead by example. Some people are what they don't do and what they don't allow other people to do and holding teammates accountable. So I think for Bradley um, to miss 32 games, it certainly wasn't his vision of what a great season would look like. I think he's been, if anything, he probably sacrificed a lot in terms of shots and, and things that he's, he could very well go do. You know, I, I would expect him to score more next year. I think that would help us. I think he needs to stretch his game and, and continue to shoot more threes because that's something he's shown he can do. But he can also create. we got to really be careful when we look at lineups where we're making sure we give him plenty of uh, people to play off of. But I, I think he's still one of the better scorers in the NBA. And I, I think he's uh, getting in the prime of his career. we got to keep, keep him healthy. That's the biggest thing. That answer your question. Um, what, but you didn't Where did I leave it short? Uh, well, I mean, the leadership, because I know kind mm-hmm. of a couple years ago, he had some moments where he was really working on body language and mm-hmm. working on picking up a little bit more. Yeah. Um, has that continued? Yeah, I think so. I don't think we're, any of us are perfect, and any of us are ever going to get to that, that day when we're just absolutely great leaders. I think we all learn as we go. And one thing we all have to channel is what, the difference is between frustration and what you can control. And night in, night out, if you're a fan of the NBA, like we all, you know, we watch games every night. And you see players have tough nights. Coaches have tough nights. So I, I don't expect anybody to be perfect. I expect you to keep trying to be better. And I think Bradley does that. I think we can all do better. Um, but certainly, you know, I think the biggest challenge this summer is to put this season behind us and focus on forward. What can we all do better? What can we do different? What can we bring? The great ones, they always bring something new to their game, but the great ones also make everybody else better. And I look at that, and you ask about leadership, and I give Corey Kisper all the credit. He, Corey's the one doing the work. But Bradley's maybe the one that's nudging him and showing him some things. And, you know, it's just – so Corey's out there doing that, and that's – very noticeable his improvement. But I also see like you know, Johnny Davis had there was ten bumps in the road. He had eleven of them. He had a tough rookie year, and it's, it ended on a really high note. And our players never stopped believing in him and pushing him. People in his ear, encouraging him. You know, it, it means a lot to a player from his peers. I think peer pressure is the best kind of pressure. And I see all that a lot of that leadership from Bradley, uh, Corey, kind of giving Johnny tips because he Corey went through a tough spot his rookie year. You know, the mascots were hitting shots from half court and he couldn't hit a shot. Like it's, he, he had that to draw upon and share that experience. I think Bradley's had a lot of experience with, with highs and lows. You know, if you can get through a whole season injury-free, God bless you anymore. But I think he's, he was there when, when DeLon was hurt and helping him through that. So I, I see leadership appear in places maybe you don't get a chance to see. But we all need better body language for sure. Yeah, no, I I just like to see that group to make that decision. Obviously, financial stuff is it, it, it gives people the perception like you're going to be locked in on that roster forever. And you know, time and time again, you know, if I listened to everybody. Right. We would never would have been to trade some of the contracts that were. I was told this you will never be able to trade this contract. And the next time you will never be able to trade that. You know what I mean? So I appreciate the free advice, but it is free, and you know sometimes nothing more expensive than free. Like I have to know what the league is. We have to collectively know players' value. The value to us is the most important, but their value around the league. Those guys. Astro Bradley was the fourth rated, I think, free agent in the whole entire free agent class this year. 
we have two of the top ten guys in the division playing. So I think the talent is there. And to your point, it's frustrating because you have some pieces. I mean, you know, you have got these pieces, but the pieces have to fit. But I don't think we've had enough time with those guys to say unequivocally it fits or it doesn't fit. So I'm stubborn that I'd like to see those guys get more time, and we have to do more, surround them with more talent, more things for sure. But I don't think it's it's time to just say it doesn't work and let's go some different direction. Okay. I get that. I, I'm just wondering, like, even if they're, let's say, 35 samples, they were you know, 19 and 15 on the fourth round, and I go 15 and 19 and 15. But it's progress compared to where it's been, right? And if it was that, what you say, Certainly, if your preseason prognosticators say you're going to win 35 and you get to that, there, there's some progress there. Not dramatic, but there's not any team, I don't think, that's ever just jumped from here to there. Now, they've gone from here to there, but overnight, it, it's tough. Right? And that's not our goal. To, I, I don't think we want to take five years, 10 year rebuilding any of that. I, I think the biggest thing is don't, the, the next big steps, to your point, those are big financial commitments, but if we feel strongly that those guys can get it done and you do that and you continue to add talent around it and if it doesn't work we'll figure you know we'll, we'll know pretty quick but I, I think those guys would tell you I, I think it, they feel that it can work right I was just wondering like how, how do you take that next step from you know, playing kind of ranked mm -hmm. to next kind of yeah I think that's where you go through this you, you go through you know we've had that in the past where get to the playoffs, get through the first round, get to the second round. We want to get to that third round. We were awful close years ago. We got to let that go. That was a long time ago. Brad's the only player left from that. But how do you recreate that? Is You have to go through the fires to get there. You can't just say, well, this team right here, there's no way they can get to the third round, so let's not even try. Or the second round, let's not even try. This team, you, know, you got to build and let them go and earn it and go through that. And the league is an interesting place. If you follow along, there's some teams that are trying to, on the fly, hey, let's just go all in on this and see where it goes. And at deadline, there were some humongous financial situations, right? And some, some are looking like they're going real well, and some don't look like they're going real well. So you can learn from everyone around you, but I really only need to concern myself with what's here. And I think, to your point, hey, there's, there's some unknown there, for sure. We have confidence in their abilities. We have confidence in their character. I think we can get good results. Every position, you, know, you you evaluate, say, is this person that we have at this position, are they capable of stepping up and being a, a key player? Are they a role player? Are they a star in their role? Or are they, you know, out of the rotation type? You, know, you try to really focus on the top rotation pieces. And if there's opportunities to get better in those areas, through the draft, you know, I, I'm a big believer. Look at the best player available. We have certain positions in need, but I think we have some vets coming back throughout our roster, that, a, that there's not a need that says a rookie has to start from day one. If they earn it, they will start from day one. But I think it's, it's better to have people come along. Now, I saw some impact in, in anybody that thinks it's, you know, the end of the season, those aren't garbage minutes to us. They're not garbage minutes to players. I, I can't speak to fans, but those minutes that Johnny got, you know, we were able to, thank goodness, the time he spent with the go-go, Plus what he did with the Wizards, he went over a thousand minutes this year. Minutes uh, a game time. But that confidence that he took on the way out the door, four for twenty aside, you know, he had a tough night last night. But I think just the confidence that he was able to get back into his swing does it. Like I think he'll be a more polished player next year. I would expect a lot more from him next year. Earlier next year, can't rewind whatever happened to him this year. But that those are the kind of players that. Look internally first before you go into the draft. And, and if there's somebody there at that position that didn't get a chance to shine, like I would use Johnny as an example, maybe that, that position of need isn't as pronounced as uh, maybe people would think. I have confidence he's going to be a good player. Similar things happened to him at Wisconsin. I mean, his first year was kind of almost a uh, – nobody had, nobody saw what was coming. And then the next year he, he took off. And some, some players come quick. Some players take time. You got to be patient. The draft 
free agency. We'll, we'll evaluate. There's some players that, that you know, things things come up that we're not even thinking about right now. You know, as other teams lose in the playoffs and they got to retool their roster. And, you know, it's, you got to have a lot of conversations and continue that conversation. I talked to 29 teams in a month's time. I've talked to every team at least two, three times just catching up with people. So you have a good pulse on their roster and likewise. Those things happen. Sometimes trades happen in, in one phone call and sometimes they take two years. We'll see how it goes. And what was the goal for this season? You mentioned words like you were disappointed. Yeah. It hurts you sitting here um, talking with us today so the season is now over. Yeah. What was the goal? Well, as I mentioned several times, the playoffs, and at least to get the postseason and, and get that opportunity to get that taste and get moving forward. You know, I think that we didn't run from that. I, I don't think we, you know, we, we sure didn't let down the prognosticators, right? We landed exactly where we were. So our internal goals were much higher than what people thought of this team, and they should be. You know, I, you always want to be better than people think. And the fact that we didn't do that, we can rationalize and say, well, all these injuries, all these different things. At the end of the day, it is what your record is, and now let's get better. Tom, good morning. Um, good morning. Have you officially met with Ted to confirm that he will be returning? Myself? I, that's not even been part of a conversation. And I guess you or he uh, talking to any about your contract extension? How do you address any of that this summer? You know, um, we don't really ever negotiate publicly or anything. I think Danny's been a bright spot as a, as a young player that's come through and been able to start or not start, defend multiple positions. He's done a lot. He's earned a lot more responsibility. We made a trade this year to help elevate his area. Um, so extensions, if there's something that makes sense for both sides, certainly we're up more willing to sit down and talk about it. we got a lot of bigger things to do between now and free agency. we got to really focus on the draft. I know Denny, he's going to take a little bit of time off, but he's going to work diligently to get that three-point shot down. I think you saw a lot more secondary playmaking that he's capable of doing. His confidence, when he's confident, he really does amazing things out on the floor. We just got to get him to hold that confidence at all times. And that This comes with maturity. It comes with repetition. You know, he's going to be into his fourth year. So we look at that for sure. I wouldn't put a number on it, but certainly postseason, I'll go back to that number of uh, games where we are today. You can't get those games back. You just look at how many you know, we lost eight games when we were up 15. I mean, you look at some of the, you know, just back and forth games. We, we, we stole a couple wins too, but there's some games that you just go back and say, oh, God, that one, if we could have got that, the momentum it would have built. You know, we were on a pretty good roll. Um, so, Put a number on next season without knowing what our roster is going to look like. I wouldn't do that, but I expect next year to be drastically better because that's the standard that we have for ourselves. And it, it's, it is a bad, to go back to the sense of urgency. Nobody likes to lose. We can't stand where we're at right now, but I think there's things within our control that we can fix to make the team better. There's things that we can add. And, you know, it's funny because with Bradley, it's pretty well documented that for years people are saying he's going to leave, he's going to leave, and he wanted to make sure everybody understood, I want to be here. So he signs, and then it's like, oh, does he, he want to leave? You know, hey, you want to win. He wants to win. We want to win. Be part of winning. It's a big responsibility that he has as a, as a cornerstone of this franchise. It's like 12th person on this franchise. Everybody has a job to do to help us win games. Uh, it, it's not anything that we even discuss, to be honest with you. If he's not happy, that's certainly something I'm sure I'll hear from. Um, we all want to be better. 
and none of us are happy right now about where we're at, but it's where we're going. It's going to be the most important thing. I think for him, he's going to focus on health this summer, make sure, you know, last summer, the wrist inj- the, the, the wrist surgery put him back. It did. He didn't get the full summer that he normally would have. There's been different injuries that have happened that some are, sometimes it's just bad luck. But I think he's certainly somebody that expects a lot more next season from himself and from this team. And we do too. Tommy, how do you evaluate Brad defensively this season? Um, you know, everybody can do better, but I think he definitely is, you'll see him. He'll, especially in the fourth quarter, he's going to take on big challenges. Again, I think it's it's not just one person that's going to turn a defense around. It's a, that's a collective and everybody knowing what they need to do. Um, I think the numbers show this team had potential to be a better defensive team. At the end of the year, we did improve from a year ago. Not enough. It's not acceptable to be just going inch by inch. We got to get better. Bradley certainly can get better defensively, just like every other player on this roster. If the team's looking for complete accountability on defense, doesn't the best player on the team have to put in a better defensive effort throughout the year like in order to get results coaching yeah. this season? I think everybody has to do better defensively for sure. And, and I, to your point, there are lots expected. He puts in a lot of work on the offensive end as well. Uh, very rarely, I don't think the you know, team by team, if there's one guy that really is the best offensive and defensive player on their team, there's not too many of those guys in the league. You always want to have the highest expectations of yourself. And I think Bradley does. And I'm not going to evaluate his season here publicly, just like any of the other players, until we really sit down and talk with each other. And what worked? What didn't work? Why didn't it work? What can you do better? What can we do better? I think those are better conversations, more informed. I think he would tell you, hey, we all could have done better, but it starts with him. And I think he takes that. To heart, you know, he, he's been an all star, he's been an all NBA player defensively. I think it's, it's not just one player that's going to turn that thing around, everybody has to do it, and they have to do it every night. And he's shown he can go out and lock, be a lockdown defender, crunch time, he's done those things. I don't think it's a, an ability thing, you know, we just have to do it consistently. Thanks, Tommy. Anybody else? We all got you over here at 10 o'clock in the morning. Get your money's worth. Come on. <laughs> Thank you very much for your coverage. I, I want to just continue to send positive vibes to Jeff Zilgit and uh, hug your families. Have a great summer. We're always here. We're grateful for your coverage. Thank you.